night, first item on tonight's agenda, declarations of interest. Do let any members have any personal or prejudice to interest to the candidates? Agenda item number two, the confirmation of our previous meeting minutes, the previous meeting held on the 3rd of March. I'm happy to propose these. And I'm happy to second that, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Holtz. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, can I say that the minutes don't seem to accurately reflect some of the questions that were asked at the last meeting? Therefore, the, the report on um, the um, item at sorry, bear with me a second on item um, 13 uh, have not been addressed in the report. Um, I did ask quite specifically about uh, varying um, the um, and um, that hasn't been covered at all. Comment from the parish council. Um, I believe that the money held in both the trusts are permanent endowments, which means that the original capital mustn't be touched, and that the trustees must protect the original value of the bequest. However, I'm, adv I'm advised that the accumulated interest may be used, subject to permission of the charity commission. Um, so, I, really, I think that should be addressed. And I also feel that we should know whether the, um, the charities have a reserve policy. So those are two issues that really haven't been addressed and I feel should be addressed in this report. Can well, I have some comments, please? I think the two issues. First of all, you feel that those matters need addressing. You can't deal with them on the agenda today as it uh, takes place. And the other, could you say exactly what you feel should be said and hasn't been said, please. I, I felt at the last meeting I had covered this topic and asked that a solicitor be asked for advice. I, I, I have actually um, talked to a solicitor myself and I've also done some work with the Charity Commission and I'm advised that it is possible for trusts to ask for permission from the Charity Commission to use accumulated interest. Um, I can say that tonight, but I'm sure my word won't be accepted, which is why I, I asked that the, uh, the officers uh, talk to a solicitor to get that kind of information so that we have impartial advice. So the additional points that you want are not... You, you, you've done that since the meeting, but at the meeting you felt that you asked for solicitor advice on those points. Chief Executive, please. Comes out in debate. Um, legal advice was sought from our solicitor in terms of certainly the Rawstone Trust. Um, I did circulate, we have something called a group leaders meeting prior to meeting with the parish council, the friends group and anybody else, I circulated the questions that were going to be asked and gave all group leaders the opportunity to check those questions and clarify that everything was covered. Yes, Councillor Buckley, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I just ask for your, your ruling on this, perhaps uh, under a point of order? We, we are discussing the minutes Indeed. here. We're yes. not discussing the meat of the item, which yes. we can discuss in full when we come to that uh, matter of the, on the agenda. We're just discussing whether the minutes are accurate and I'd be grateful for your guidance on that. Thank you. Well, thank you for saying that. You said it better than I did when I said, are these po the, the, can these not be addressed later? You just want a correction to the minutes. Could you tell us? I'm as asking as why, why? why the questions I asked were not minuted. And I think that's a perfectly reasonable question to ask. 
So what would you write? How would you like the minutes, adju the, the minutes adjusting, please? I believe, I believe that the minutes should reflect the questions asked, and that was one of the questions asked that evening. And it was a very, very pivotal question because all the way through I have asked whether the trust can be buried. And uh, that's why it's so important to actually minute that particular question. Mr. Collins, Councillor Collins, please. Mr. Chairman, um, the item was deferred at the last meeting to, um, to bring a report forward to this meeting to answer questions that have been raised at that meeting. And surely, if those questions were raised, they should be answered in the report before it's debated by this council tonight. Thank you. Councillor Fazakali. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I really find it difficult to believe that if Councillor Oates hasn't got some, has got some further questions, that she hasn't submitted them before the opening of this meeting. Mr. Mayor, I, I wasn't one to get involved in this little row because I know nothing about it other than we're talking about the minutes. Are the minutes accurate? Were the questions asked at the last meeting, and therefore why are they not on the order paper tonight as minutes? They're not fresh questions as far as I'm concerned. They're questions which were very relevant at the time of the debate and basically should have been minuted. And if they'd been minuted, reflected in the report tonight. Maybe Councillor Hayhurst would like to propose an amendment. What will that amendment be, please? Not what hasn't been done, but what the amendment should be. What, what would you like it to say? Right. Um, I would like it to say that um, a question was asked about whether the um, trust could be buried, and um, I asked that. Um, a solicitor's advice be obtained and reported to the next meeting. Do you second that amendment? Councillor Ashton, you want to speak before I take a vote on this? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's a long debate about this issue, and I'm just looking at the minutes now, and this is what was proposed and seconded this, this very amendment. This, these are the correct minutes. There's nothing wrong with these minutes at all. This is what the council, the full council, voted on. Surely that's what we're talking about. What did the full council vote on? We voted on this amendment. I'm happy with the minutes as it's done, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so you will be voting against this amendment. Um, then I think we should need to take a vote on this amendment as to whether we amend the minutes of the last meeting according, uh, in accordance with what Councillor Oates has said and Councillor Hayer has just seconded. Mr Mayor, this isn't an amendment. Well, what it's is it? whether the minutes are a true record, and I am saying that I asked that specific question, and it's not covered in the minutes. That's all I'm saying. But that being the case, you are seeking an amendment to the minutes. You yes. wish the minutes to be amended. That's what I'm asking us now to vote upon. Anybody wish to speak before we take the vote? Councillor Fiddler, please. <laughs> Yeah. Mr. Mayor, just to flag up this fact that I, Councillor Trumfall and Rigby, left the room because of a prejudicial interest, and therefore we can't partake in this present debate. Okay. Thank you. Um, all those in favour of the, the amendment that we amend the minutes um, to emphasise what has been said, please show. Those in favour of the amendment. And those against the amendment, please. It's, uh, the amendment's been defeated. Or the, current. the amendment has clearly has been defeated. Um, the votes being 17, 4, and 23 against. Are we now then, with that amendment cleared, is everybody in agreement or can we take a vote 
on the minutes themselves. They've been proposed by myself and seconded by... I'm sorry, Mr Mayor, but because I voted in favour of the amendment, I can't second the minutes. Would you like... Thank you very much. Those are proposed and seconded. All in favour of the minutes of the last meeting, please show. As I propose them, I better share. <laughs> Those against, please. The minutes are clearly approved. Thank you. Item number three, the Mayor's announcements. Um, I have got my voice back. I don't know whether you'll be pleased or not, but those who were at the um, Mayor's Ball on Friday, some were pleased and some hoped that uh, I wouldn't get my voice back even until Wednesday's DC meeting. However, um, it's only four weeks since our last council meeting, and here we are at really what is my last full council meeting. Um, it's interesting, I can observe now that the Mayor's work is quite seasonal in many ways. It starts with carnivals and processions. We go on to prize givings and speech days, Christmas events and carol services, and now I think it's more formal events, uh, leading up, in fact, as I said, to last week's mayoral ball. I was very grateful to see how well attended the mayoral ball was. There were 40, 19 councillors, four members of staff, were amongst the 120 guests at Friday, on Friday night at the Grand Hotel, and you helped us to raise some £2,500 towards uh, the charities this year. So a big thank you to everyone who was involved, and particularly to David, who was around somewhere, and in particular to Joe, the great asset of a Mayor's Secretary who's had a few years' experience. is something you will find very grateful to happen. So, um, only two weeks ago we had a trial run of the sand yachts, and I think that's probably the most exciting thing that's happened uh, other than the Mayor's Ball over the last um, month, and it was very good to see the sand yachts, or do we now call them land yachts? I'm not sure. They were referred to in both of those contexts. But uh, it was a, a, a good event, and I think we all hope um, that it will come back permanently. So, it's been an enjoyable year in this chair, and thanks very much to the professional and polite way that business has been conducted. I've appreciated being your mayoral representative with the invaluable help from Karen here, and can I thank you all for the support which I've received whenever I've been in your local areas. Um, it really is so nice to be introduced to other people and to see as many folk as you can throughout the borough. So to those who are standing again at the next election, best wishes, and um, I'd also extend those best wishes to those of you who are retiring. Thank you very much, and it's now your turn, Chief Executive. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, this is the last meeting of the current administration. Um, 51 members um, are out for re-election re or election in May the 7th. Um, I would like to thank everybody for the time and the effort and dedication that they've devoted over the last four years. Uh, it's not an easy task being an elected member. Uh, I do see some of you um, getting lots of um, thankless tasks, uh, and it, it's, a, it's a difficult, a very difficult task to take on. But you know, I've seen 51 members do a tremendous job. Those of you that are running again, I wish you all the best. Um, those of you that have decided not to run again, again, I wish you all the best. And um, we look forward to a, a new administration on May the 20th. And thank you very much for all your support. Thank you, Alan. We now turn to agenda item number five, questions for member of the council. First of all, uh, with two questions, and I would firstly like to invite Councillor Odes to read out her question, and uh, I can remind you all that a supplementary question is permitted, provided it's related to the response given. Does the 
leader agree with me that councillors should take an active role in setting the budget and that scrutiny should also be used as an important tool in the budget process? Thank you very much. Um, now to Pazakali, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. In recent times, scrutiny has played a pivotal role in our budget setting process. Budget proposals have been subject to a rigorous consultation process involving the public, business community and our own scrutiny processes. This provides all parties, including elected members, with the opportunity to express a view on the budget proposals each year in advance of the annual budget setting meeting. Opposition members are also invited to propose alternative budget proposals. I am confident, Mr Mayor, that this level of engagement will continue going forward as we embark on our new governance system. The practical arrangements of this system with regard to the scrutiny process will be the responsibility of the new council, ensuring that the government's arrangements as proposed by the cross-party governance working group are effective with scrutiny embedded within the work of the programme committees rather than being separate from them. Budget proposals will remain open for comment to members of the public and the business community and the new programme committees will be provided with the opportunity to articulate an early opinion in terms of budget priorities with an opening budget report being presented to each programme committee in November of each year. If the new arrangements are deemed by members not to provide the required degree of scrutiny and challenge, then, as is the case with other aspects of the revised constitution, changes may be necessary to correct that deficiency. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. Councillor Wills. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, as the leader is aware, at the Policy and Service O and S Committee, I asked a series of questions about the capital budget in relation to grants proposed to be given to Freckleton Parish Council and the Lather Trust. The questions came about after a number of councillors had studied the budget and asked me for clarification about these two items. I'm getting to it if you'll wait, Councillor Ashton. <laughs> In the event the questions could not be answered at the meeting and the officers undertook to get answers for the full council meeting, would the leader agree that the, at the council meeting answers were provided in relation to the Lowther grant and the grant was subsequently approved but it wasn't possible to satisfactorily answer all the queries in relation to the Freckleton grant so the decision was deferred until this evening's meeting? I wonder whether the leader will be interested to know that this decision appears to have caused a deal of rumour in Freckleton. I hope that she'll be as disappointed as I am, as it would appear that some misinformation and rumour appears to have emanated from the parish council themselves. I have a parish council document headed Clark's interim report for March 2015. In the report, to the, par uh, to the parish, the clerk seems to quite vigorously deny that he sent a letter from the parish council asking for a pledge of um, funding and instead sent it from the friends group. Can I interrupt just for a moment? Uh, does this relate, it seems to be talking about parish business. Can you it keep is, it, it to budget yes, business, yes, please? Yes, it, it, it is talking about parish business. You're quite right, Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. This isn't a question. This is a statement. This is a statement, Mr. Mayor, not a question. Um, this has happened in the past when we've had a Melton Grove issues and we've uh, stood, sat here and listened yep. to Can you keep it to council counselors. budget matters, please? Uh, yes. Um, I do feel that this council should know that certain things have been said about this council at Freckleton Parish Council and I, I think it should be brought to the council's attention. 
That's why I'm doing this tonight. Now, if you want to stop me, Mr May, you can, of course, but I do believe that the Council should have information relating to what's being said about this Council at Freckleton Parish Council. Thank you. So is that the end, really, of your supplementary question? It isn't really, but I will sit now if you want to stop me, Mr Mayor. But I do believe that um, information has been circulated in Freckleton about this council relating to spurious questions and misleading um, points being made, and I think it's quite wrong. Thank you. I think we'll leave it at that. If you want to add anything further, then it would be helpful to express that, preferably in writing, to the Chief Executive. Are you, are you happy with that conclusion or not? Mr Mayor, I have to say that I am very disappointed on this final council meeting of the t- our term of office that Mrs Oates should take this opportunity to make a number of statements, the truth of which have not been verified and seem to be concerning rumours circulating in Freckleton and things that are being said at the parish council meeting, which quite frankly I... Personally, I don't want to know rumour and tittle-tattle of what is happening in Freckleton. And can I just remind, uh, well, with all deference to you, Mr Mayor, the supplementary question is supposed to relate directly to the answer I give to the first question. And there was no mention of Freckleton Parish Council, rumours in Freckleton, unanswered questions. It was about the budget setting process <coughs> and member input and scrutiny. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. I think you make a good point, and I would ask everyone for the future to try and clarify as much as we can in advance of these meetings, rather than to score points at the meetings. There is a second question, and this is from Councillor Eaves. Councillor Eaves, please. Uh, Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can I ask the uh, portfolio holder uh, to give members uh, an update on the progress of the uh, coastal defence project? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. That is Councillor Belfour, please. I'd like to answer that. Uh, Work on the strategy for replacement of the borough's coastal defence has taken several years to get into a position that We'll soon hopefully see the release of government funding to start on the Fairhaven and Church Scar projects. In 2009-10, Shoreline Management 2 was produced and consulted upon, which looked at the whole of the coastline of England and Wales. This took a high-level approach to setting the broad approach to future management of each section of coastline over the next 100 years. In the case of file, this was largely hold the line. Then in 2012, the shoreline strategy affecting the coastline of Fylde and Blackpool was prepared. Can everybody hear? You, you may be just squeezing the mic with your paper. Thank you. The document is referred to as the strate- Strategic Appraisal Report. This locally began to make the business case for the replacement of re- particular sections of coastal defence. Key to this was the calculation of the notional cost of damage caused by sea defences being breached against the cost of the works to replace those defences. Where it can be shown that new defences are cost effective, a scheme is more likely to be supported by DEFRA for capital funding. Initial business case calculations for Fairhaven and Church Scar could however not demonstrate sufficient value for money. If the strategic appraisal report at that point had been submitted, it would not have placed Fylde in a good position to bid for further funding. Instead, work continued in in further examining actual cost potential damages, especially looking at the higher than average values of properties in the vicinity of Fairhaven and Church Scar. Following the work, the strategic appraisal report was submitted to the Large Projects Review Group in London in October 2013. When officers attended to present the strategy for filed, the group subsequently approved the strategic uh, appraisal in January 2014. The next stage in the process 
is the preparation and agreement of a project appraisal report, or PAR, for, for Fairhaven and Church Square, that is, which was fully funded by a grant from DEFRA. The project appraisal looks specifically at details of the project and agrees such matters as the design and construction of the new defences. Currently, work is well underway with the pr project appraisal and so far, two consultation events have taken place in Fairhaven Lake to establish the views of people. Finally, costings are also underway. Once the project appraisal is complete, this, this will be submitted for sign-off by the Large Projects Review Group in London in August this year. The Council expects to hear shortly after. Mr Mayor, it is worth pointing out that, that some parts of the file coast suffer from greater erosion than others. For example, defences of Anchors Holm and Russell, which are currently being replaced, suffer from full frontal wave action from the sea with, uh, with large t daily tidal range. This results in greater erosion than taking place than, say, the headlands of Fairhaven and Church Scar, which are more influenced by estuary currents. The scheme at Russell, when complete, will protect several hundred properties on the adjacent Chatsworth Estates, which, if you have ever been stood on the seawall looking at the houses below, will see firsthand a very real risk to property and life from a breach of the existing defences. As a result, it is right and proper that government investment in new coastal defences should be prioritised where there is greater need. As other parts of File Coast are being addressed, it is now the turn of File Borough to see investment in new coastal defences. The government has recently announced that it has brought forward funding for Fairhaven and Church Scar. <coughs> As a result of lobbying by this council and file cabinet to secure the funding as soon as possible, it now shows 16.1 million funding over three years. Beginning next year, 3.2 million, and the year after 7.3 million, and the following year 5.6 million. The work of the coastal defence projects on the file coast are managed and overseen by the File Peninsula Coastal Programme Board. It is made up of senior officers, portfolio holders, including myself, from the three filed authorities. The three filed coast authorities, I should say, Mr. Mayor. A small specialist team, coastal engineers, act on behalf of the board, advises on technical matters, and undertakes project management duties. The board has an inclusive and collaborative approach which helps to learn from all partners. It is recognised as a board that has helped to lever in millions of pounds of investment and delivers successful projects. Mr Mayor, the road to improving the coastal defence here in File and safeguard our residents has been long detailed and has required hard work and tenacity. I have every confidence this work will bear fruit very shortly for File. And at this point, I would like to thank our officers and all those involved in this project. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much, Councillor Felfall. And as a Fairhaven Ward Councillor, thank you even more. I'll be able to make use of that advice in the letters I send out to my electorate. <laughs> However, do you, do you, do you, any comeback? Good. Thank you very much. <laughs> We're now looking at questions from the members of the public. Let me turn over. And there are two questions here. First of all, from uh, Beth Sharp of Lytham. Would you like to read that question out, please? Thank you, Mr Mayor. First question is from Beth Sharp of Lytham. The question is, I would like to ask why the council cannot provide me with smaller bins. This is wheel bins. As I can't get any because you are out of stock and won't order any more as you have to buy in bulk of 300. Um, who is going to answer that question, please? Councillor Pounder, sorry. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you, Mr Mayor. <coughs> In answer to Mrs Sharp's question, <coughs> I can give the following answer. File Council carries a re replacement stock of 240 litre bins for the green and grey waste 
and 100, smaller 180 litre bins for the blue and brown waste. These were the preferred standard options after extensive consultation when the wheel bins were introduced. We do not supply any smaller bins for the green and grey waste because the individual price is high and there is not sufficient demand to place a bulk order. The bins are also issued to the property and remain at the address if the resident moves out. Therefore, the standard size bins are issued to all households. It is not a requirement to leave the bin out for, for every scheduled collection. If the bin is not full, many customers choose to wait until the next collection. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I don't know whether um, Best Sharp is here, but um, at least uh, that is the answer. That's the answer. And the best answer we can give to that question. Thank you. There is a second question, and that is from Mike Wright of Wharton. Can I ask you to do Thank you, Mr question? Mayor. Second question is from Mike Wright of Wharton. Planning officers regularly grant major planning applications, subject to a high number of conditions. Developers are regularly in breach of these conditions, examples being the long-running battle by residents in Rare Green to ensure compliance and a more recent example in Wharton, where Fileborough Council advised the developer that they were in breach and that they should stop work, but to no avail. Residents are repeatedly being told that Fileborough Council do not have sufficient resources to adequately police compliance. This clearly leaves the door wide open for developers to abuse the system. Fileborough Council have a statutory and legal obligation to ensure compliance and whilst it is accepted that national planning guidance ties the hands of planning and enforcement officers to some degree, the same guidance states that effective enforcement is important as a means of maintaining public confidence in the planning system. Residents and local communities increasingly feel let down by Fileborough Council's lack of meaningful enforcement and lack of clear evidence of that enforcement. In order to rebuild confidence with local communities, what reassurances can the Chief Executive and Head of Planning give that adequate resources are being allocated in the coming financial years to ensure that compliance is given the same priority and resources as new planning applications? And what reassurances can they give that the enforcement process will be much more transparent than it is now. Thank you very much. Uh, I think this falls to you, Councillor Fiddler, to answer, please. <coughs> Mr. Mayor, the author of the question asks specifically for various reassurances from the Chief Executive and the Head of Planning. The Constitution does not allow them to answer directly. So it falls to me as a planning portfolio to deliver their collective response. I apologise, the report or the answer is longer than I normally address this council. I'm sure you'll find a way of shortening it. <laughs> you know me better than that, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> the National Planning Policy Framework sets out clear guidance to local planning authorities that they should facilitate rather than hinder sustainable development. To this end, the framework sets out, sets out that local planning authorities should consider whether or otherwise unacceptable development could be made acceptable through the use of conditions or planning obligations. In line with this guidance, file Borough Council attaches conditions to the vast majority of planning permission it grants. The responsibility for complying with planning conditions rests with the developer. There is a formal process in place that requires the submission of details and they are discharged by the local planning authority. Any work carried out in breach of a condition attached to a planning permission is unauthorised. As with any other breach of planning control, the local planning authority must establish what form of enforcement action is appropriate with regard to national guidance and the implications of that breach. 
In line with the guidance contained in the National Planning Practice Guidance, this will start by seeking to ensure compliance through negotiation and discussion with the developer. The aim is to ensure compliance with planning le legislation rather than seeking to punish a developer for non-compliance. If a developer continues work contrary to the advice of the local planning authority, then they do so at their own risk. The NPPG sets out that local planning authorities should avoid taking formal enforcement action where there is a trivial or technical breach of control, which causes no material harm or adverse impact on the immunity of the site or surrounding area. Farborough Council considers there are adequate resources in place to ensure compliance with planning legislation. But in common with many local planning authorities, it, it, works, in partnership with, it works with in partnership with the local community to ensure potential breaches are brought to the attention of the Council. There is no evidence of anyone being repeatedly told that there are insufficient resources to police planning conditions. Planning enforcement is a discretionary function of the Council, so there is no statutory or legal obligation for the Council to commence enforcement action, as stated by the author, Mr Wright. The development sites referred to in, the, in this question have been visited by the Council's chief specialist, planning enforcement and planning officers. A great deal of resource has been used to investigate alleged, alleged breaches of planning control in a manner that is appropriate and proportionate. Many of the alleged breaches investigated at these sites have been unfounded and others are subject to ongoing investigation and subsequent possible action. The Council's planning enforcement charter is transparent about how the Council will investigate reports of unauthorised development and the levels of service that both the complainant and the person who the complaint has been made can be expected. Mr Wright can be reassured that the Enforcement Service will continue to work within the defined parameters of this transparent charter. Mr Wright has a clear misunderstanding a clear misunderstanding, a misunderstanding about the volume of work required to process new planning applications and that required for the discretionary enforcement of planning conditions when the advocates that the same level of resource should be allocated to each function. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. So I think the key to that is that we do rely on the general public an awful lot, I think, to make sure that compliance takes place, which is with regard to an ongoing planning application, and that enforcement where necessary again takes place when members of the general public tell us that something is happening without planning permission. And I think that is basically a good way forward, and particularly in this sort of community where we have so many active people. Thanks for the question. Item number seven, we have agenda item number seven, a notice of motion from Councillor Keith Beckett. Yes, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the reason why I've put this notice of motion on is the notice of motion is that the council look into the crematorium, re a chapel, re an extension to the chapel and car parking as it to be put in the next capital programme. The reason why I'm asking for this is I've been to about 10 funerals in the last 12 months at the crematorium and I'm afraid that when you go to the crem on five occasions people have had to stand up in the crematorium stand down the centre aisle I don't think it's dignified I don't think you can give respect to the people that's died I think it's a problem that needs addressing and something needs doing and considering that this is one of the biggest assets that Farlborough Council has got I think it should be looked into seriously I wrote to, I got in touch with Alan Oldfield who's the chief exec and Alan sent me a long email back stating that when the crematorium was built, it wasn't built to compete against the churches. But times have changed. He admitted that, and he also said there will be car parking problems. So, on doing that, I got in touch with the churches. I got in touch with Canon Cooper, Vicar General, advisor to the Bishop of Lancaster. 
And I also got in touch with Dean Reverend Richard Bundy, Area Dean of Kirkham, and also advisor to the Bishop of Blackburn. Now these are the two highest people you can go to in this area if you want anything sorted out. And I told them what the plan was, what I'd put forward, and what I'm putting forward now. And both of them said, you can quote us as saying they think it's something that should be done. So, as I say, what I'm asking for is for the windows on the right-hand side of the chapel to be taken out and an extension put onto the side of the chapel. And also, where the car parking is, leave the curbing up the left-hand side and put chevron parking down the other side, which will double your car parking in that area. So, that is what I'm putting in front of this council. It just doesn't benefit the people of Kirkham. It benefits the whole people of the file. And everybody goes to the cram. And I don't see why you've got to cram in a queue and sit like that at a funeral. It's supposed to be dignified and you're supposed to be able to give respect. And that is what I'm asking this council to support. And I have a second for the motion. Thank you. Somebody seconding that motion, please. <coughs> Councillor Rhodes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Let's open to debate. Councillor Little, this is your portfolio holder, and you have the first say, please. <coughs> Sorry. I just want to thank Councillor Beckett for his notice of motion. I second the motion. Councillor Little, please. Thank you. Thank you. Portfolio holder. Uh, but as you all know, due to the governance change, this will, of course, be taken up by the relevant committee. I therefore move an amendment that this request be considered by the relevant committee at budget time next year. Mr Mayor, I do have a seconder. I am that seconder, Mr Mayor. Yes. Um, I don't know whether it okay. needs to be proposed as seconders, really. The, the, as I understand it, the matter is open for general debate. Does anyone else wish to contribute, having heard what our portfolio holders said? As I understand it, an amendment has been proposed by Councillor Little to accept that this is considered by well, the appropriate a, committee. I, I do apologise. Uh, it, it is, some, I think, something that's got value in being looked at, um, and that has been seconded. So, at the moment, it behaves just like a normal agenda item. That is currently open for debate. So, it is the amendment now that is open to debate. Yep. Councillor Oates. Speaking to the amendment, can I just ask whether costings will be looked at during the course of the year so that when it does get to budget time next year we'll be looking at it um, properly with all the right information? Um, Councillor Collins, first of all, please. Uh, yes, Mr Chairman. Um, I do think this is something that should be looked at by the appropriate committee uh, as and when. Um, I think there is scope to perhaps increase the charges of the crematorium. I've been doing a little bit of homework myself. At Lytham, uh, the charge currently is around about £500 per cremation. If you go to Preston, it's £583. There is a private crematorium at Charmick Richard which charge £805. Uh, so if you take an average of those three amounts, uh, you can with an average of £625. So I think there is scope uh, to increase the charges to, to cover uh, any work that will be needed. This should be looked at at the appropriate time. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Buckley, please. Uh, thank you, Mr Mayor. Just in terms of charges, um, Councillor Collins might be interested to note we've just passed a budget that uh, in the fees and charges has looked at those very charges and has indeed increased charges in the Semon Krem if he wants to have a look at that and there's been a review undertaken as to how we benchmark across uh, with other boroughs um, to keep make sure that we, we are still providing good value for money <coughs> and, and I know that on, on a whole on an average we are still just below average when it comes to other uh, surrounding boroughs. So that piece of work has been done and we certainly don't, we've got to be very careful on this matter, not to overcharge. It's very expensive, as we know, um, when it comes to cost, funeral costs and all the uh, ad additional costs uh, for that and, and uh, we do respect that. But just to go to the amendment and to support the amendment, clearly we're in the, in the very last council meeting of a term. Uh, we cannot be binding uh, the next 
the new councillors that, mm. uh, uh, that will be elected to Fylde. And uh, more than that, we're embarking on a new governance system as well. So it's quite right that this matter comes before the relevant committee. And as for the questions about, well, will there be, uh, will there be the figures put forward? Well, that's for the committee to scope. So if, as long as this matter comes back before the relevant committee, that committee can scope the work and then it can be considered. And of course we would need to see figures before it goes anywhere near the capital programme. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Mulholland, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm not sure if the press are here tonight, but if they are, I'd like to point out that as a non-aligned independent coming up to re-election, re I certainly wouldn't be in support of uh, raising crematorium fees. Um, <laughs> I don't think it would be what the public expect really at this, at this moment in time. Um, Councillor Beckett might have a point, and no disrespect to him, but it sounded like it was a plan and on the back of a beer mat. You know, we'll knock out these winners, we'll do this, we'll do that. <laughs> he needs looking at. He needs looking at. The amendment is to look at it in a serious way. Of course, I would expect there to be costings. Of course, I would expect there to be. Um, planning involved and it would go to whichever programme committee is appropriate Where, how can anybody want to argue about that total common sense thank you Mr Mayor thank you so I think the, first, the item we have in front of us is um, the yes. amendment is any... yes I certainly um, uh, Councillor Becky gets the right to speak to, to the amendment I'm sorry, Councillor Beckett. Yes, you can speak, if you will, to the amendment, please. Yeah, Mr. Do you want us to read it out first? No. I'm, all I'm asking is that this council look at it, and it's possibly there. The amendment can go in place of my, what I've said. I'm quite happy, as long as this council look into it as a physical thing that can be done, because it's a serious thing, and it does need altering and something doing. And we can't do it until all the costings have been done, which I accept, and everything else. I'm not a mathematician. I don't write things on beer mats. But I understand the process that everything's got to go through. When I talk to the chief executive, he says it's got to be sorted out and then put into a capital programme. Fine. That's what I'm asking for, which is exactly the same as the amendment. Thank you for standing up and saying that. I think that's very acceptable to us all. So, really, um, we only now have the amendment before us. Is everybody in, in agreement that that is the right and proper way forward? Do you want to speak before we take that vote? Mr Mayor, I, I asked if you could read it again because I thought I'd heard the portfolio holder said at budget time next year. That was why I asked for clarification. OK, let's get this clarification to yours to everyone's satisfaction. Yeah. The amendment was that this request be considered by the relevant committee at budget time next year. Now, would you like to develop that a little bit more? I think what is being said is that the appropriate committee look into it in advance of that as well. Are you happy that that's added yes, to it? Yes, 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 yes. I am happy with that. But as, as, as the portfolio holder, I can't tell you what, well, you want, to, that's I right. can't tell you what to say. No. But right, can we... Bring those two things together in a way that's acceptable to everybody, please, Mr. Curtis. Right, as we understand it, the proposal is that this issue is looked at and considered during the next municipal year in preparation for submission to the next to the budget. Next capital budget. With that amendment to the amendment, I'm quite happy with that because it clarifies much. things. So, can I take it that everyone is in agreement with that? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh. We can if we need to. Would we like to vote on something unanimously? All in favour? Yes. Please show. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyone again? Anyone against? I don't believe anyone was against. <laughs> point, of or, point of order, please, Mr. Mayor. Um, we're aware that, that at the budget meeting the, the rules were flexible, shall we say, but I think we should just try and go by the Constitution from now on. So we've had a vote on the amendment, and we should now have a vote on the substantive motion. 
I understood the substantive motion, motion was withdrawn by Councillor Beckett. <coughs> so, uh, Mr. Okay. Murrah, I'm, I'm, if we can't I'm not do a... that, let's, let, let, let's uh, proceed along the lines that you said. I don't mind. I'm quite flexible. Councillor Duffy is correct. We have voted on the amendment. So the amendment is now the substantive motion. In accordance with the Constitution, you, are, you now have to vote on the substantive motion. Unless, of course, anybody else who's not already spoken on the substantive motion wishes to speak on the substantive motion. It would be nice to have two consecutive um, unanimous votes, so please show if you are in agreement. Splendid. Anyone against? Even more splendid. Thank you. We're now on to um, agenda item number eight, governance arrangements. Um, I'd like to ask uh, Councillor Buckley, please, to introduce this item. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I'd like to recommend to Council, it's on page 17 of the agenda papers, recommend that Council adopt the amended constitution, which is available at the link. Um, the papers have not been circulated because they're, they're that thick and that's double-sided. And they were subject to the um, working group, the uh, cross-party governance working group, who looked at the whole change in the governance arrangement. And one of the meetings that we had uh, went through this new constitution page by page. Uh, I would uh, expect that further, further changes, amendments to the constitution will go before audit committee in the future. But for now, Mr Mayor, I do ask that we uh, adopt this amended constitution for filed. Thank you. Mr Mayor, I have pleasure in seconding that recommendation. Thank you. Does anyone wish to speak before we take a vote? Councillor Duffy, please. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just to say that um, I'm sure that everyone will understand that not everyone agreed with every single aspect of, of what's in the new constitution, and that's, that's fair enough. Um, I would like to say that I personally think the, the working group did work quite well. Um, not perfectly, but it, it worked quite well, and bearing in mind that everybody has their own opinion, then nobody probably expected it to work perfectly. I'm sure that there are members of the public who probably um, would like to see things slightly differently. But at the same time, I think this is quite a good start, and I hope and expect that uh, from next year it should work quite well to start with. And if improvements are needed, then they can always be made. Thank you very much. Anyone else wish to speak? Can we take the vote? Everyone, please show if you're in favour. Everyone in favour? Thank you. That's clearly carried. Anyone against? Thank you. We now turn to I agenda item number nine, the community infrastructure levy. And uh, I'd like to invite Councillor Fiddler, please, to introduce this item. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Perhaps a little background before I make a recommendation to Council. The concept of taxing development is relatively recent. I'm sure some new members of this council don't appreciate that. And rightly or wrongly, it was Tony Blair in the early 2000s who introduced the concept of a roof tax on development to finance local infrastructure. Most of us are familiar with the concept of Section 106 obligations. And most of us are aware of Fowles' interim housing policy that secured finances to deliver public realm and public open space. Community infrastructure levy, or as you'll often refer, be referred to as SIL, is a new charge on development. It is based on a standard charge, and as an example, an illustration, an example is using central Lancashire, is on page 23 of tonight's agenda papers. SIL will replace Section 106 in terms of off-site matters, and Regulation 123 of SIL 
directs FILE to list the types of infra infrastructure subsequently to be funded, such as transport, education, leisure, health, etc. Section 106 will still apply in order to mitigate the impact of specific developments according to three statutory tests. And these three statutory tests are one, that the it has to be necessary to make the development acceptable in planning terms, two, directly related to the development, and thirdly, fairly and reasonably related to scale and kind. Section 106 will remain as a vehicle for delivering affordable social housing. Mr Mayor, I ask Council to approve the recommendations on page 21, and in particular that one, FAL prepares a charging schedule, and two, FAL drafts a, rec a regulation 123 list of all the infrastructure projects to be wholly or partially funded by SIL. When this exercise is complete, it will then go out to public consultation, it will then be put in front of the local plan inspector, and by statute will have to be endorsed by this full council. Mr Mayor, that's all moved. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Rhodes, please. Oh, sorry. sorry. Uh, Councillor Rhodes, second. first, if I may. Oh, you're seconded it, yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. Councillor Rhodes, please. Um, I just wonder whether it would be possible to ask a few questions about this. Um, page 22, um, point one. Is it possible to include drainage on that? And um, page 24, little two, um, it talks in there about um, contributions for mitigating infrastructure impacts, um, and it says it will only be possible for a maximum of five planning obligations to be pulled to contribute to any one infrastructure item or infrastructure type. And I, again, I just wonder if we can have greater clarity on that one, because is it five in the whole of the borough? Is it five in each area? Um, and is, is it per year? So I don't, I, I just wonder whether we can just have a little bit more clarity so we understand that. I'll just ask many other questions first of all and then we can have maybe an omnibus reply. Any other Are there any other speakers? Yes, yes please, Councillor. Yeah. <laughs> You, yes, sorry. Okay. I'm bad at remembering names sometimes. Councillor Duffy. Sorry. Um, I was just a, a question, Duffy. really, that um, looking at the, the possible or the example that's given here on the, the details of what the charges might be, um, do we have any exclusions to this? So, for example, if there's um, a development that's going to be 100% affordable housing, do they then have to mm -hmm. contribute to the SIL as well, or could they be uh, made as an exception? so that there's no contribution in terms of the affordable, uh, affordable housing component of any development. Thank you. Um, Councillor Nelty, please. No, I just wanted to uh, express support for this and, and hope that it can move forward very quickly because uh, we all know that we've missed out on contributions for various things because we have not got the civil regulations in place. Uh, and I won't ask how long is a piece of string, but I hope it can be moved very quickly. Thank you. Thank you. It's my understanding that you still can't be in place until there is a local plan in place. But, uh, Councillor Fiddler, could you help to answer some of these questions, please? I don't think so. No. Councillor Fiddler, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I was aware, under the impression, possibly wrongly, that this wasn't the opportunity to ask a series of questions. However, um, I will endeavour to answer some of them. I may not have the answers to all. I think the first point made by Councillor Oates was whether or not one could include drainage in the list of infrastructure. Uh, I am sure there is no reason why you should exclude drainage. It's a very important uh, usually common to virtually every application we get is questions of drainage are asked. And uh, because it comes back to full council after consultation, full council will have the opportunity to check 
and address the those items which are listed on the 123 schedule. Uh, I think Councillor Duffy's uh, question really uh, touches on the question of viability in terms of the degree of affordable that you could secure on any one application. The question that Councillor Rose makes in terms of clarifying there is a statement, and I am not too sure of the answer, and perhaps this can be clarified out of this meeting, when a reference is made that uh, there is a maximum of five Section 106 uh, obligations to any one identified infrastructure project. Uh, how that works, whether it's entirely uh, borough-wide or whether it has to be specific to the location. When I made reference in my initial introduction, I did refer to the three statutory tests that Section 106 has to meet before you can apply that. And one of them, of course, is that it's pertinent to the specific application before you. Clarification, I'm sure, uh, will be needed for Councillor Oates. And uh, in terms of uh, Councillor Nulty, and the Mayor has already answered the question, the SIL regulations in full will always come to be applied when we have the local planning place. Thank you for that. It's greatly appreciated. Um, then I think we're now turning to item, agenda item number 10. But we need a vote on that. I do apologise. Are we all in agreement with the information that's before us? All in favour? We're doing well for unanimous agreement tonight. Thank you very much. Is there anyone against this? It'll go downhill shortly. You may not be here at that moment. Um, item number 10. This, um, again, call is, is, is a point. Councillor Fiddler, please. I'll give him a minute. It helps. So Trevor, we're calling you again for item number 10, please. Oh, yeah. Request for funded budget increase. I believe uh, you're going to deal with this item. Well, Mr. Mr. Mayor, you surprised me. <laughs> this is the question of transfer of funds to the St. David's Road development in order that that development can Ooh. proceed comprehensively. Yeah, you, 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 I Sorry. I do apologise, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, Councillor Buckley, it's a financial and planning matter. I'm so. very happy to, to offer to Councillor Pillar to swap you look places. After him, yes. <laughs> and, to, uh, and to recommend to Council, this is to approve a fully funded revenue budget increase. So um, it, is, it is, as it says, funded uh, in the sum of £300,000. It's to meet the payment to Great Places Housing Association. It's on the site of the old quick site uh, in quick St. Anne's. Save. Quick save site, sorry, in St. Anne's. And it's to be met from Section 106 planning agreement sums retained by the Council for this specific purpose. Happy to so move. Thank you. Anybody wish to answer, ask any questions? No. Do any wish? Sorry, I keep being reminded. You're not asking questions, you're speaking upon it. They're usually questions, but nevertheless. Anyone wish to speak? All in favour then of uh, agenda item number 10? Thank you. That's clearly carried. Anyone against? Item number 11. This is a review of scrutiny. And uh, Councillor Fazakla, please, would you speak to this item? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Colleagues. This report bids farewell to the Council's overview and scrutiny committees and celebrates their work and achievements and the input and effort of those who have served on the scrutiny committees over the years. The committees came into being in 2002 and for the first two years there were two committees, Best Value O&S and the Community and Performance Overview and Scrutiny Committee. Excuse me please, gents. Could we concentrate on Thank you, Mr. the matter Mayor. in front of us? 
Sorry. It was decided in August 2004 to increase the committees to three community forums. Community Outlook Community Forum, Policy and Service Review Community Forum, and Performance Improvement Community Forum. These then reverted to scrutiny committees again in 2006, with the addition of the Planning Policy Scrutiny Committee and the Scrutiny Management Board. In 2009, Council resolved to dissolve the four existing committees and the SMB and replace with the two committees with which we are familiar today. As we all know, the committees have worked with officers and local organisations and residents to bring about improvements in services. In addition to regular meetings of the full committee, task and finish groups have been set up to facilitate in-depth scrutiny of a variety of areas, examples of which are provided on page 31 of tonight's papers. The report ends with a note of thanks from the current scrutiny chairman to all who have contributed to the scrutiny process over the years. And I would like to add my thanks as current leader of the council to the retiring chairman, Fabian Craig Wilson, and Kieran Mulholland, and past chairman, for their enthusiasm and dedication to what has not always been an easy task. Mr. Mayor, I would like to move the recommendations on page 30, and I have a seconder. Thank you. Seconder. Happy to second that. Thank you. Anyone who wish to speak to this item? And could I ask you if you're all in favour of those recommendations, recommendation 1 and 2 on page 30? All in favour, please show. That is clearly carried. Is anyone against? No. Nope. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, can I endorse what has been said there? I think the school committees have been very effective and well chaired. The next item is item number 12, noting of any urgent uh, business taken. And I would like to invite Councillor Fazakla, please, to introduce this item. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Colleagues, this probably is the shortest item on any agenda ever. <laughs> I'd like to move the recommendation that the Council note the report that no urgent decisions were made by Cabinet during the last 12 months. And I do have a second, Mr. Mayor. Good, thank you. Any questions? Any questions? The recommendation simply is that Council note the report. Do we need to take a vote on that or do we simply note it? All in favour? That is clearly carried. Anyone against? We're really doing very well. We're turning now to agenda item number 13, which may not be quite so easy. I think there are three members who we need to allow to leave before we start the debate. You'll recall that this item was discussed at the last council only a month ago, and I think uh, the chief executive gave his undertaking that he would do his level best to get it to this meeting, and I think that's taken a bit of doing, and I think we ought to thank him for doing that, um, as, as he said he would endeavour to do so. Um, it is the contribution to the Frettleton Memorial Garden Community Project, and I think this falls to you, Councillor Fazakli, pleased to um, introduce. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and colleagues. I'm afraid that I, I'm going to kind of break my duck from the um, shortest item on tonight's agenda to what is going to be the longest introduction on tonight's agenda, but I make no apologies for that. It's, it's an important topic, and I need to give it 
uh, a full introduction after which I'm sure we'll be having a full debate. So if I can just say to you, if you are all sitting comfortably, <laughs> then I will begin. Colleagues, as you will remember, at the Budget Council meeting, Councillor Buckley presented what was deemed an exceptional capital scheme item relating to the Freckleton Memorial Park. The proposal was to make a one-off contribution to be funded from the Capital Investment Reserve towards the Memorial Park Regeneration Project, which was launched at the commemoration of the 70th anniversary of the Freckleton Air Disaster. During the course of a full debate, a number of questions were raised regarding the possibility of alternative funding streams which might be available for this project. And the following amendment was proposed by Councillor Oades and seconded by Councillor Hayhurst. That the item be deferred subject to further investigation and clarification of grant funding. Following a brief adjournment, a revision to the amendment was proposed by Councillor Buckley, which read as follows. That the capital remains in the budget until the questions raised are explored and a report is brought forward to the next meeting of the full council to make a decision as to whether the money is released. Councillor Oates outlined that she was content with the alternative proposal tabled by Councillor Buckley and the eventual outcome was that this plan of action was adopted. It is now, colleagues, that next meeting and you have before you the report which was requested which provides information about funding arrangements for the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Gardens Community Project including details of the funding initiatives carried out to date, the funding strategy and responses to questions raised about the financial position of Freckleton Parish Council, which is one of the organisations that has provided grant support to the project. I think that councillors are fully familiar with the background to the sequence of events which originated in a request in May of last year from Freckleton Parish Council for financial support for a group called the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Park, a well-established group who wanted to create a lasting memorial to those who died in the 1944 <coughs> Freckleton Air Disaster, and in particular, the 38 children killed in that tragedy. Their objective was to create a fully inclusive play area and surrounding gardens for the community and visitors to enjoy within the current Freckleton Memorial Park. I need to reiterate that the group has worked closely with officers from Fylde Council as well as other organisations and were aware of the request made on their behalf by the Parish Council and they were aware of the contribution by the Parish Council in advance of Fylde deciding to make any contribution. I mention this because it has been suggested that a week before the Budget Council, the Friends Group were not aware of the parish contribution and that they had not been aware of the request made by the Parish Council on their behalf. This is clearly untrue. The group had already secured £30,000 and hoped that Fylde Council support would lever in additional funds to deliver the scheme, which has been costed at between £160,000 and £180,000. The group has subsequently secured funding to the value of £45,000 and has a strategy in place for further funding. This sets the scene for the Budget Council meeting. Cabinet's proposal within the agenda papers at Budget Council on the 3rd of March was to contribute £50,000 to the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Park Group. At this meeting, a number of concerns were raised regarding the recommendation and the concerns fell into two distinct categories. Firstly, regarding the financial position of Freckleton Parish Council, 
which had made the request to file counsel for a contribution on behalf of the Friends Group, and it was felt by some members were in a position to make a greater contribution, thus reducing or removing altogether the filed contribution. And secondly, that Filed was proposing a large contribution to the Friends Group before the latter had explored all other possible sources of funding which is inconsistent with similar schemes developed in the borough by other community groups. Obviously, some further information gathering was required, and to that end, meetings have been held with representatives from Freckleton Parish Council and the Friends Group to obtain information in order to clarify the issues raised. As you will have seen, there are several appendices attached to this item, and the questions asked at these meetings are included <coughs> in Appendix 4. There is also an informative diagram showing the relationships and parties on page 37. Information as to the financial status of the other contributors and potential contributors to the fund is also available in the appendices. Freckleton Parish Council has made a donation of £20,000 out of their Community Development Fund which stood at £98,218 as at the 31st of March 2014. The Parish Council feels that given their financial position in terms of availability of revenue or capital and other asset maintenance requirements, a £20,000 donation to the Friends Group is reasonable and proportionate. The registered charity, the Robert Rawstorn Trust, is managed by members of the Parish Council. The capital held in the Trust is invested, and only the income from the capital can be distributed to pre-defined institutions within the village. The remaining balance of the Robert Rawstorn Trust Capital Fund stood at £579,000, on September the 30th, 2014. This relatively large sum of money was mentioned several times at the Budget Council meeting, and sub subsequently the Parish Council was asked whether the £579,000 capital from the Trust could be accessed to make a further contribution or even fully fund the Friends Group Memorial Project. The governing document, Mr Mayor of the Trust, is the will of Robert Rawstorn. You will find on page 38 some legal background, but in a nutshell, the intention of Robert Rawstorn was to leave a sum of money available for religious and recreational purposes in perpetuity, generated from the interest from the capital sum. There is conjecture in paragraphs 15 and 16 as to whether it would be possible or advisable to attempt to access the Trust's capital. But the report concludes that the Parish Council is currently not permitted to spend the capital sum and any variation to the Trust would require necessary approvals and deter from the most effective long-term use of the Trust as prescribed in the will. Details are provided of allocations between 2010 and 2014. The Freckleton Charitable Trust Limited is a second trust that was set up to manage the donations from the air disaster. This trust is administered by a community group of 12, three of whom are co-opted from the parish council but this is their only link with the latter. The fund currently stands at approximately £100,000 and its objectives can be found at paragraph 21. To date, there has not been a request from the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Park for a contribution from this fund, but it is definitely on their agenda. The Friends Group funding strategy for the park 
will identify this trust as one of the potential sources of grant for the project. It is worth noting that spending from the fund has averaged approximately £3,250 per annum for the last five years. <coughs> the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Park were established in January 2012 and requested technical support from File Council to provide landscape design and project management expertise. The project is also supported by the Environment and Community Projects team at Lancashire County Council. It is important to note that this group is a community group, not a parish council subgroup. The group was established by dedicated mothers who wanted the play facilities for their children to be fit for purpose and safe in keeping with what should be provided on this memorial park. <coughs> the group was concerned that the project had led to some challenges at the Budget Council meeting and subsequently a meeting was arranged with Lynn Braithwaite and Nicole Partridge from the Friends Group who provided confirmation on a number of issues that had been raised and are listed at paragraph 23, <coughs> including that the Friends Group were actively seeking contributions and raising funds whilst Filed Council's Parks Development Team worked on the public consultation exercises and preparation of the master plan with them, and that they began seeking opportunities for grants and to fundraise as soon as the project was conceived. Additionally, the group has a funding strategy in place that will be driven by the completed master plan which was approved at a meeting of Freckleton Parish Council after petitions had been held that showed 27 residents against the project and 350 in favour. At this point, Mr Mayor, I would like to deviate from what seems to be a very long introduction to this item to sing the praises of this well-organised, hard-working group of supporters who have worked so diligently to raise funds to commemorate an event so tragic that it beggars belief, whilst at the same time improving the quality of life of the current generation of Freckleton's children. I understand that there are some members of the group amongst the public here tonight, and I would like to salute your efforts as we like to thank all the amazing groups of volunteers who contribute to our community life here in Fylde. As portfolio holder for leisure and culture, it has always given me great pleasure to acknowledge the work of friends groups, and this is the last opportunity I shall have to do so in this role, so I'm glad my last one was such a good one. Moving to the, on to the activities of the Parks Development Service, 10-stage process for parks improvements. When the Community Parks Improvement Program was approached by the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Park for assistance in 2013, it was agreed by all parties to put the project through the 10-stage process of the program. Details of these 10 stages can be found at paragraph 27 on page 42 of the report. The project is now at stage 7. A scheme has been agreed and priced and a funding strategy prepared. As we now know, the group has secured around £45,000 as at March 2015 through external grants and fundraising events. Delivery of the project would be through the parks development process with all procurement and project management undertaken by officers from the parks and green space team. The Friends Group has purposely requested that work on site is undertaken as a single contract so as to keep disruption to a minimum. In paragraph 30 there are some suggested conditions which could apply if members are minded to approve the bid this evening. When I move approval of the scheme, you will see that they are all incorporated within the recommendation with the addition of a time limit. The Constitution requires a report being presented to the relevant service committee after May 2015 
to satisfy financial regulations and draw down any capital funding for the project. The report will detail what is to be delivered and provide members with the opportunity to approve the detail of the scheme prior to the release of the release of funding. Colleagues, I thank you for your attention during this rather lengthy introduction to the debate, but I felt that it was important to underline the main points in this carefully researched and comprehensive report. Questions were asked at Budget Council, and I hope that the information contained in the report, together with the important contents of the appendices, will satisfy those who were seeking further clarification and an allaying of their concerns. Mr. Mayor, I would like to move the following recommendations. One, to approve the capital contribution of £50,000 to the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Park Community Group, subject to A, the project being managed and the money spent through filed councils park development processes. B, confirmation that funding is in place to fund the whole project before going out to tender reporting to committee. C, that a time limit of two years is placed on securing the total project funding and that if the project funding has not been secured within the time limit, the contribution is rescinded and returned to the capital investment reserve. And D, that Filed Borough Council receives full publicity for its contribution in any publicity or com communication released, including on-site notice boards. Mr Mayor, thank you for your kind attention. I have a seconder. Thank you for that uh, stoic performance. Uh, Mr Mayor, the leader has just said exactly what I was going to say, almost word for word. So it will give me great pleasure in seconding um, her proposal. And, and I would like to reserve the right to speak if necessary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. <laughs> would anyone wish to speak to this item, please? Councillor Nolte. Okay. First of all, let me be quite clear that I want. Sorry. But I want to see Freckleton have an up-to-date play area and park for their children. And I wish the Friends of Freckleton Park every success in their efforts. I was born in Freckleton and lived there for 20 years and still have friends there. I started school in the Methodist Chapel Hall as the infant department of Freckleton C of E School had not been rebuilt following the disaster some 10 years before and was not open until several years later. But we did have a good playing fields donated by the Americans. So I know all about Freckleton, my brother, brother being in a class with some of the survivors of the disaster, which must never be forgotten. And it isn't, and the fact, um, as Councillor Fazakali said, there must be a memorial to this disaster. There are, in fact, two memorials there already. There's one in the park, donated by the Americans, I believe, and there is the, the one in the graveyard, which is a brilliant memorial to all those, uh, all those people. The one problem I have, and the question has not been answered, is where is the money that was donated by the Americans since that time? Where, where has it gone since? Uh, I did ask Mr Oldfield if this had been asked about, but he responded that this was a question that was never asked, although I distinctly remember asking it at the last council meeting. The fact that it hasn't gone forward, it's been lost somewhere in, in the meantime. The other problem I have with this application for grant is that Freckleton is not being treated in the same way that other parishes have been. And I know this is a disaster and I know we don't want to forget it, etc. But it is known that Freckleton have other sources of funding, as is demonstrated in this report. Most parishes and areas in Lytham and St Anne's have set up a friends group in the same way and gone out to seek grant funding. 
from other bodies, with some help from Falborough Council and LCC advisers. They have not been given a large capital grant by Falborough Council at the start of the process. In fact, Wesson was charged, and I said this at the last meeting, it was charged £5,000 for administering, uh, administering the scheme by the borough. Although some schemes have had some money or some help in, in kind, there seems no parity in this, with Freckleton asking for such a large amount before exploring the opportunities to gain grants from elsewhere. There seems no par parity either in the opportunity to apply for capital grant schemes. I was not aware of the apparent ability of all of us to apply for schemes to be put into the capital programme, nor were other councillors I've spoken to. It seems you have to be in the know to get things moved forward in this way. I do feel that in future, the way capital schemes can be put forward and are assessed must be clearer and I hope this will be better under our new committee system. I want to support this, but it is such a large amount and I feel much more work needs to be done to attract funding from elsewhere first, such as from CETA, Veolia, LEF, as well as the Frackleton Charities, to see exactly how much <coughs> money is needed for match funding that may, may be required. I do agree that some part of this funding could be released now, but I feel that the rest of it should be put aside for use if and when it is proved to be necessary. So I'm not against it, but I do feel that the whole thing, £50,000 just given over like that, is just too much. Thank you. Do you have any other speakers, please? Councillor Oates. <coughs> Um, first of all, can I just mention um, item 5 on page 36. Um, this is the first time that um, it's ever been suggested that Filed uh, would act as the accountable body. It wasn't uh, put to budget council meeting, it wasn't put to cabinet. And I'm just wondering why it's appeared tonight. Um, I just wonder whether it's actually um, legal to do this because I thought that um, the whole cost of the scheme needs to be shown in Farborough Council's capital estimates showing where the other money is coming from as income and including the 50k grant from file council as part of the, of the overall scheme expenditure. So if filed is supposed to be the accountable body, is the full cost of the scheme not shown in the accounts? Um, I'm asking that question and I, I, I just hope that we can uh, be told that what is being proposed here is legal um, I think um, perhaps a leader could perhaps give me that assurance and hope she will do so later. Um, I, started by ask, I started by asking a number of questions about the capital budget items at the policy O&S meeting, which I felt was the proper procedure to follow. In relation to the Lowther grant, we were provided with all the answers at the Budget Council meeting and the grant was approved. However, the questions asked about the Freckleton Parish Council request were not answered, so the item was deferred until tonight. A number of questions have still not been dealt with in this report, which is why I've had to try to pose questions again tonight, and they still haven't been dealt with. Let's deal with facts. I asked about where the Friends Group is up to in the Community Parks Improvement Programme. We now know that they're at Stage 7. This means that they are preparing a funding strategy and getting ready to go out to external funding streams. We also know that since the last meeting, they've added 38,500 to their pot. So they now have 45,500. 
We used to have a capital fund from which it was possible to fund two to three items of new play equipment each year throughout the whole borough. The result was that our play areas were old and tired. We then discovered that if parts groups were set up, they were able to tap into all sorts of external funding not available to this council, and it was possible to refurbish whole parks. A parks team was set up which could help local groups to access this funding, and there are now 15 to 16 parks groups in this borough who between them have accessed over £1.5 million over the last seven years without any capital funding from this council. A master plan is drawn up by each group, publicly consulted on, and, when all is agreed, external funding applied for. This is the stage the Freckleton Group is at at the moment, and when they start their bids, they're likely to raise monies from bodies such as CETA, the Big Lottery Fund, Viola, and the Lancashire Environment Fund. And that's why I asked what stage they were at to see whether they had exhausted all other sources of funding. We now get to the two trusts which exist in Freckleton. The Rawstorn Trust, we now know, is a trust managed by the Parish Council, which apparently has a substantial permanent endowment of £579,000. I asked at the last meeting whether the trust can be varied to allow it to contribute a modest amount of its accrued interest to the Friends Group. I would still like a definitive answer to this question. The Parish Council states that they would have to seek legal advice and approval from the Charity Commission to see whether this is possible. If the Parish is requesting this Council to contribute to its most important part, it should surely be willing to seek advice on whether it could set aside twenty to thirty thousand pounds of this very large endowment to contribute to the memorial garden. This modest amount would not deter from the long term use of the trust. It would hardly make a dent in the endowment. The Freckleton Charitable Trust was set up to manage funds from the air disaster and, according to Companies House, they would appear to have an endowment in the region of £122,000. I'd also like to know whether it's possible for this trust to be buried, and, if so, given that it was set up in recognition of the air disaster, I'd hope that they would also be willing to contribute to the park's refurbishment. I'd like, therefore, to move an amendment. Number one, that at this stage in the Community Parks Programme, £20,000 of the capital budget is immediately given to the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Garden to immediately aid match funding. That the existing £30,000 budget be held in our capital budget and such, until such time as the Friends Group has exhausted all its external fundraising efforts. If at that time the £30,000 is still needed by the group to complete the scheme, the funds should be released to them. Number three, that the Friends Group be urged to apply to the Rawstorn Trust and the Freckleton Charitable Trust for donations towards this project. And number four, that £20,000 is put into future years' capital budgets in order that town and parish councils, in conjunction with parts group, can in future access funding to access external funding streams to improve parts throughout the borough. I do have a seconder, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, who is the seconder, please? Oh. Right. You were asking to speak a few moments ago, and was that the original proposal, or were you wishing to... You asked to speak before Council... Oh, I wish to second uh, I wish to second that proposition. And you're now speaking to the uh, amendment. I would like to speak now, yes. Um, when I was... Can I just say, I haven't spoken to my amendment yet. Sorry. If, if but okay. I can come back if you want to allow Council... I don't mind. You decide between you. Go on, Paul. 
Okay, I don't know if I'm standing for the original proposition or for the amendment, but um, certainly I wish to speak to the amendment uh, because it's basically what I was saying at the last meeting and what Councillor Oates was saying at the last meeting. When, when I was leaving the meeting last, last time, as I was walking out, a member of the public said to me, um, Roger Wilkinson would turn in his grave if he saw all this chaos tonight. Uh, people probably don't know who Roger Wilkinson was, <laughs> but Roger Wilkinson was a borough treasurer and a very a able borough treasurer of Far Borough Council. And he later became um, a chief executive. And in those days, borough treasurers were very sound sort of individuals, people who treated every penny as though it was their own money. And certainly Roger was very much that, that way. So the reason why I'm standing here tonight is because I feel as though we need to look again at this because we've got to ensure the proper administration of taxpayers, of council taxpayers' money. This is not having a go at Freckleton and this is not um, saying that we don't support this scheme. What this is saying is that this, we are using council, council taxpayers' money to administer this scheme and therefore we've got to get our sums right and we've got to make sure that everything is, is, is proper. And I'm afraid that that is not the case. If you look at the papers and if you heard what the leader said tonight, um, the group, which is doing an excellent job, has raised or has committed about £125,000 towards this scheme, excluding the £50,000 which the, which the Borough Council is talking about um, giving them. That is for a scheme which is likely to cost we're told, between 160 and 180,000. So, if it was 160,000, they would be 35,000 short. Now, when you look at the order paper again, you find that the Rawstone Trust, back in the 1980s, contributed £32,113 towards um, the sports centre and yet they've not been asked for any money yet. We're also told that the um, Memorial Fund also has an income of nearly £5,000 a year, which again, the group apparently has said they're going to apply to the, uh, to the two trusts for, the, for this money. If they did that, and if they were successful on the lines that is stated in the order paper, they would get £37,000 which when you add it to 125,000 means that they would have 162,000 without the file borough grant. And if, if, if it was going to cost 180,000, which is the outside amount, they would be 18,000 pounds short. So the point is tonight, we are jumping the gun. What we should be doing is coming in at the end of this process, not at the beginning. We should be then obviously making up what money is required rather than committing it now. By, by, but by committing it now, what we are doing is basically saying to the parish council, you don't have to pay any, any money from the Rawston Trust, you don't, because the fact is that Farborough Council has paid the money. And so we are in a situation whereby if everything comes out as it has done in the past with other organisations, they would have £210,000 for a scheme which could cost between 160 and 180,000. What would they do with the other 30,000 if it came in at 180,000? We are in a situation where we are, we are allocating Farborough Council money before we know what it's even cost or what the maximum amount they've got, they've been able to achieve on grants. And to be honest, in the old days, when Farborough Council had plenty of money, um, we, had, we had no debts. Roger Wilkinson would have scrutinised this um, page by page. We're now in a situation where we didn't have half the information at the last meeting. Now we've got the other half of the information. The fact is there's further questions to be asked. We are putting the cart before the horse, Mr Mayor, and we should be um, doing what Councillor Oates has said, committing £20,000 now and then obviously um, withholding £30,000 to see how they fare, how the group fares in securing additional funds elsewhere. You have 
stood to second that, but I think Councillor Rhodes felt that um, you were preempting her conclusion. Yeah, I didn't Would speak to the amendment as that for a second. Um, yeah, I, the reason that I'd ask everybody to support these amendments are that I'm fully supportive of all the parts group in this borough who are all volunteers and work tirelessly as they provide safe, up-to-date play areas for our young people, mostly funded by external means, which this council would be unable to do. It also saves our council taxpayers' money, so it's a win-win. If the Freckleton Friends start their external fundraising efforts with the assistance of this council and the County Council, with the funding they have raised and pledged, I believe that they should soon be able to fund this project. If they're successful and don't need the £30,000 from the capital budget, this will save filed council taxpayers' money. If they are not able to attract the necessary level of funding, then the monies are still available to them in our capital budget. They will not be held up at all in their endeavours, as they have stated that they do not intend to start the project until all the funds are in place. I do not, and never have, advocated not giving this funding to the Freckleton Friends, despite rumours to the contrary. I just know from experience that the external funding is out there to access and I believe that this should be done first. I also believe that as, as this is such an important part to the people of Freckleton, commemorating as it does the people of Freckleton lost in the air disaster, that the two trusts within the village should be asked by the Friends to give donations towards the refurbishment. Both trusts have considerable funds which many people would arguably say should be used. If they could ask the Charity Commission to allow them to use some of the accumulated interest, these endowments need not be unduly diminished, yet could contribute towards a project which totally fulfils the aims of both the trusts. Finally, I believe that we should offer this type of match funding to other town and parish councils and their associated friends groups, allowing them to access match funding for part schemes. As I have previously said, many of the parks in this borough have been totally refurbished by the efforts of a huge band of volunteers at little cost to this council, and this should be applauded and encouraged. It will also spread the capital budget to all areas of the borough, which should surely be welcomed. We have then an amendment which has been proposed and seconded. That becomes the substantive motion. So it's now for people to speak to that amendment. It's an amendment. It isn't a substantive motion. Nevertheless, it is the item now on the issue now that um, we are going to speak to. Councillor Silverwood. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, so just speaking to the amendment. Um, I am very happy to support the amendment that Councillor Rhodes has um, just tabled. Um, I do think that um, what has happened, because the, um, because the item was deferred from the budget meeting, it has given everybody an opportunity um, for more information to come forward. Um, for example, we, we now read in our papers that it's actually the Parish Council um, put the um, submission forward on behalf of the Friends of the uh, Parks Group. We weren't advised of that at the meeting last time. Um, if that was the case, therefore, I, I, I am a little bit baffled. If it's the Friends Group, why... Um, three of our councillors have had to declare a prejudicial interest and therefore leave. Um, perhaps they're a lot keener to do that these days, uh, just to play safe, I'm not sure. Um, but we, we, at least, as, we say, as I say, have had the opportunity to look into what is exactly, well, I'd like to think what's happening at Freckleton. Um, I stated at the budget meeting that the chair of the uh, Friends of the Group is a lady that works for me. I know how hard she and her colleagues have worked for the past three years and are now coming into their fourth year. I know how difficult it has been when they've been going around Freckleton trying to raise money for their group and over and over and over again they've been told or had said to them, 
Why are you having to do this? I don't, we don't understand. We know there's a pot of money that is a, there as a result of the, uh, the disaster, the, um, the crash. So perhaps this has brought this uh, more into the open, which can only be a good thing. What I also don't understand is why the group is coming into its fourth year and only last year it was advised um, by um, a member of the parish council that isn't the portfolio holder that perhaps they should request um, some funding from the Rostron um, and the air crash disaster. They did this and they were advised that there wasn't any money available and to try again in the next financial year. Perhaps if this had been the case from their first year, they'd now be in a much stronger position than they are now. Um, I agree with my colleagues um, that this is a huge amount of money that is coming from the taxpayers. I do think that Freckleton Parish Council itself has a responsibility to this group. Um, when we look at the detail of some of the uh, funding and what the Charity Commission is saying, is they cite here that it should be going to um, families and the children um, of and the schools in Freckleton for the obvious reasons. So to put this amendment forward, as Councillor Rhodes has said, um, to pledge to give £20,000, but for the group to now go out and look for match funding, as we've said, and one point, I can't remember the figure that Councillor Rhodes said, one point, some, uh, one point something million pounds having been raised by parks groups for the last seven years shows there is funding available. So, um, yes, I'm happy to um, support the amendment. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Um, Councillor Clayton first and then Councillor Mulholland. Uh, yes, thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, I'm supporting uh, Councillor Rhodes' uh, amendment to uh, the, uh, the item. Um, I've just got some concern, perhaps uh, someone can explain to me, if we look at paragraph 5 on page 36, and it refers to the, uh, the parks development team to be helping to do the uh, work in the first place um, and uh, sort of oversee the, the funding. Within that paragraph 5, unless I've missed it, there doesn't seem to be any reference at all to any charges that will be placed upon mm. the amount of money that is actually forthcoming from whatever source that happens to be. So in effect, if the 50k is actually presented uh, as the borough's contribution, that 50k will actually, if there is no charge made uh, to the, um, or by the Parks Department, then that 50k is going to be inflated by 5% of the capital cost. So the 50k will be an awful lot more somewhere in the region of, of five to six or even seven thousand pounds on top of that, that, that um, total expenditure. And as Councillor Nolte has said, other groups uh, within the borough, including uh, Western, we've had personal experience, uh, we've had to pay five percent. And I think whilst I'm very much in support of the endeavours of, of the uh, the, the group who are trying to do this, I think it, if, from a level playing field point of view, I think it's important that we apply exactly the same rules to, to this application and also the fact that, unlike most parishes, most parishes don't have the luxury of so many different um, charities that um, are at, you know, trusts that are actually in Freckleton. And I think they're extremely lucky that they can actually tap into that. So I, I think it's essential that all those are explored first, uh, but I do also support the concept of, of a figure of 20,000 as, a, as a, a, a means of showing goodwill and support of what this particular um, memorial is all about. Thank you, Mr Mayor. And you, so if I understand you right, you're saying that in addition to the 50,000, there is also something like a 5% design and supervision fee that, in your opinion, is not being charged, and it normally is. Is that correct? I think that, that is what I'm trying to say, Mr Mayor. That, in but, effect, is hidden. Thank if you. there is no charge, that means that the borough... I'm spelling that out so that it can be clearly understood. Thank, thank you, get an answer to that. Councillor Mulholland, please. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I reserve the right to speak um, on the men. You still have that? Yes. Right. Um, so I'm just purely speaking to the amendment, and I would simply ask members um, not to vote with the amendment. Um, and the two Kirkham councillors are quite right. It's a huge amount of money, absolutely huge, and, and admirable that this was, should suggest that we could save the taxpayers' money. Possibly they'd like to. Um, it's the same amount of fifty thousand pounds for the replacing the flags. Maybe they'd like to just hold that back a year and save the council taxpayers even more. Same huge amount. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm appalled the way this, this, this debate's gone, quite honestly. Um, but I would just ask members to stick with the original resolution. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Does anyone else wish to speak before we vote on the amendment? Councillor Buckley, please. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just feel that this has been a tactic throughout this whole meeting to abuse council procedures, to get in questions, to raise the subject time and time again. And I, I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. I don't buy it. Councillor Rose, leader of the opposition, does support this. I think this is another attempt to kick it into the long grass. There, there has been questions asked and answered, and they're in the body of the report. It's just that uh, Councillor Oates does not like the answers to the questions. Um, in terms of the uh, very sensible question raised about the charging by our Parks Department, I'm quite happy to answer that because um, it was a, a previous budget proposal of this council that we open up the uh, development, the parks development service right across the borough when previously it was only available uh, in parts of the borough that didn't um, own their own, that, that had our filed assets rather than the parished parts of the, of the borough that had their own assets. So it was a change uh, brought about by this administration to open up the parks development service and hence um, parks and friends groups right across the borough have been able to access our parks development team which is a, a great thing and uh, I'm sure they will continue to do that in the future. All the spurious uh, questions and queries amounting to the trusts um, that have been raised have been answered. Um, the trusts, uh, a subject of, of much discussion tonight, are tied. There's nothing new in the information that we have be here before us tonight about that that we didn't know from last council meeting. We know uh, in particular the Rawstone Trust supports various projects and we're asked, well, could they access the capital? Um, well, we are told that this is not in the spirit of the Trust and if they did, it would mean that they would then be unable to support other organisations yes. yeah. in Freckleton. Um, the monies available to the Friends Group from the Trust on the face of it is very small indeed and, and of course we can see from the funding strategy which is part of this report that they do intend to access um, funds from the Trust and they t do intend to access other grants but of course none of that is guaranteed. So when it's asked of us tonight do we support the grant of £50,000 by committing it by this council committing it, and I do acknowledge uh, Councillor Mulholland's um, point about that we do regularly commit uh, grants to Kirkham to improve Kirkham as well, but by committing it, it now gives strength to the scheme and allows them to uh, hopefully successfully bid to other pots of funding. So I too will be voting against the amendment. Thank you. Does anyone else wish to speak to the amendment? Then you have a chance, Councillor Dackley, I'm told, to speak if you wish to the amendment because you were the original proposer. Right, thank you, Mr. Mayor, colleagues. Uh, of course, I am opposed to the amendment on a, a many counts, one of which has just been alluded to by Councillor Buckley when it's been mooted that the Friends Group could ask for an accumulation of interest from the Rawstone Trust. And if we look on page 39 of the order papers, the donations that are made on a regular basis, 90% of those are to the same people year on, year out. And if those suddenly disappeared to be donated to the Memorial Park group, all these groups, presumably Club Day Committee, 
uh, Women's Institute, Methodist Church, Bowling Club, etc., they would all suffer because the money would all have been given to the Memorial Park. Um, there's been a lot of talk about why can't we break the trust and take funds from it. And I would, I would uh, float the suggestion, Mr. Mayor, that it isn't up to Farborough Council to seek to break the terms of an independent trust or two independent trusts in Freckleton. It, it's really quite cheeky, isn't it? to suggest that these trusts, um, we get lawyers in to try and extricate money from the will of Robert Rawstorn and his wishes. So I would be opposed to that, plus the fact that, that how long is that going to take? The Charity Commission are notoriously slow in uh, their deliberations. I would just like to mention the fact that I did not say that there must be a memorial in Kirkham, in, in Freckleton, as has been suggested by Councillor Nolte. I never made that remark because I know that there are two memorials already in Freckleton. Uh, this is something completely different and the last point of clarification really, it's been mentioned that it's unusual for us to be the accountable body. It is not unusual at all for us to be the accountable body in a Parks application. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I think now is the time to take the vote. Mr. Mayor, on a, on a point of explanation, please. Um, I do have to say this because Councillor Fazakali and Councillor Buckley have both misunderstood what I said. I didn't suggest that all the interest be taken, the yearly interest which is used for the different groups. I suggested that um, the uh, Friends Group go to the Rawstron Trust and also the um, uh, Freckleton Trust to ask if they would ask the commissioners to allow them to release some of the funding that they have. Okay. I made it quite clear and I think it's really been um, mishandled okay. the way that's understand. been said. Thank you very much. Are you wanting to on a point of order, on a point of order, Mr. Mayor, order. the order is 13.13 .13 in Part 4 of the Rules of Procedure of the new Constitution that we've just adopted. Councillor Rhodes is misusing the personal explanation. It was very clear what she put forward, and uh, Councillor Fazakli and I did not misunderstand what she put forward. And Mr. Mayor, Councillor Rhodes is misusing the council's procedure rules, and I, I would ask you to please be vigilant to that in the future. Thank you. It is not a unique practice. I think we're now in the position of taking the vote. Can we just spell out the, what the, the vote is, the amendment is, that instead of the proposition, it basically is that we release 20,000 now and uh, withhold the rest. Indeed. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The amendment is that, number one, that at this stage in the Community Parks programme, £20,000 of the capital budget is immediately given to the Friends of Freckleton Memorial Garden to immediately aid match funding. Number two, that the existing £30,000 budget be held in our capital budget until such time as the Friends Group has exhausted all its external fundraising efforts, if at that time the £30,000 is still needed by the group to complete the scheme, the funds should be released to them. Number three, that the Friends Group be urged to apply to the Rawstone Trust and the Freckleton Charitable Trust for donations towards this project. And number four, that £20,000 is put into future year's capital budgets in order that town and parish councils, in conjunction with parts groups, can in future access funding to access external funding streams to improve parks throughout the borough. I think that is clear. All those in favour of the amendment? We need a, a sufficient people to demonstrate that need. Okay, recorded vote. Are you reading or shall I? 
I'll read. As your name is called, would you please say that whether you're in favour, which is with the amendment, which is yes, or against the amendment, which is no. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Brenda Ackers. Against. Councillor Ben Aitken. Yes. Councillor Elizabeth Ackroyd. Against. Councillor Frank Andrews. Against. Councillor Susan Ashton. Against. Councillor Tim Ashton. Against. Councillor Keith Beckett. For. Councillor Julie Brickles. For. Councillor Karen Buckley. Councillor David Chedd. Councillor Maxine Chu. Councillor Alan Clayton. Councillor Peter Collins. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Fabian Craig Wilson. Councillor Susan Cunningham. Councillor John Davis. Councillor Leonard Davis. Against. Councillor David Donaldson. Councillor Charlie Duffy. Councillor David Eaves. Councillor Sue Fazakali. Councillor Tony Ford. Councillor Nigel Goodrich. Councillor Peter Hardy. Councillor Paul Hayhurst. Councillor Howard Hayhurst. Councillor Paul Hodgson. Councillor Ken Hotwood. Councillor Angela Jakes. Councillor Cheryl Little. Councillor Kieran Mulholland. Councillor Barbara Nash. Councillor Edward Nash. Councillor Linda Nulty. Councillor Elizabeth Ords. Councillor Albert Pounder. Councillor Dawn Presswich. Councillor Richard Redcliffe. Councillor Elaine Silverwood. Councillor John Singleton. Councillor Heather Speak. And Councillor Viv Wilder. Abstain. Sorry, I've got. Sorry about that. The Mayor will abstain. <laughs> Councillor Kevin Eastham. Abstain. And Councillor Karen Henshaw. The amendment is defeated by 24 votes to 19. Right. We are now back to the substantive motion. Um, I think, Councillor Mulholland, you reserved your right to speak. Would you like to speak now? Does it have to yet? You don't have to yet. I can check first of all. So do I. Any, does anybody else wish to speak? Then it is your turn. Oh, Councillor Duffy. Sorry, Councillor Duffy. I do apologise. Um, I've got to be honest and, and say that I'm stood here just wondering how much I should say tonight. Um, but I will say that I'm glad that um, Councillor Frizzacli uh, agrees finally that um, it isn't right to um, change the aims of trusts. Um, that wasn't the case when the Cabinet decided that it was okay to do it with uh, Clifton Lytham Housing Association just over four years ago. Um, but at least, uh, at least some lessons have been learned, I think. Um, consistency, really, just to follow on from that, consistency is really what I was looking for here. Nobody, nobody here is going to argue that... Um, or argue with the fact that uh, this is a very worthy cause. Nobody's arguing about anything other than whether due diligence has been uh, carried out in terms of how the money should be spent. That's all people are arguing about and, and uh, trying to come up with a, a consistent and fair way of making sure that the money has been spent, spent well and only spending it if it can't be, um, if somebody else won't spend it instead of us spending it. That's all this is about. Which makes me wonder 
What's, what's the big rush? Why, what was the big rush for bringing it to tonight's meeting? When, when the questions came up at Budget Council, the Conservatives seemed really concerned that this uh, comes to the next meeting and not just run its due course. The original request, which I believe is from, uh, from a councillor or from, from uh, Freckleton Parish Council, um, came in in May 2014. So what's the massive rush? What's the difference whether it got sorted at this meeting or the next meeting? I don't really understand that unless it's just purely because it's an election year. Um, I do commend uh, Councillor Eaves um, in his question tonight, which was answered by Councillor Threlfall, who may or may not be needing a little bit of help with his uh, election prospects this year. Um, because by asking the question, can you keep to the can you keep to the issue at hand, please? I think I am keeping to the issue at hand. Um, I'm pointing out the fact that the, the fact that the way that David Eaves allowed the Conservatives and Councillor Threlfall in particular to to make a point. When you've got control of the meeting, Mr. Merrill, continue, or do you want me to just talk over everybody? I am exercising tolerance, but don't okay, push good. it too far. So, I think it's clear what I'm saying to you is that, in my opinion, the reason this has come forward now is because it's coming up to an election. David Eves used a very. Okay, you've said that point. You've made that point. David Eves used Is there a anything very. Else you wish to add to it? David Eves used a very terms. valid way of allowing people to have their say and raise their profile. He asked a question and gave an opportunity for one of his cabinet or former cabinet to um, to express and say what a good job they've done over the last few years. This, that was a, a good way of doing yeah, you've it. You've made that point. I don't want that to have to be countered. That was a good way of doing it, and I don't think this is. And I well, think people will see through it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor Mulholland. Follow that. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm not going to prolong this meeting much longer. I think everybody's had enough. And it's become quite obvious um, how my rural colleagues and independent members are going to vote. Um, so I'm, I'm obviously not going to change anybody's mind. Um, it's a shame to some parts of Councillor Mrs. Olds' amendment um, I initially thought were, were quite pleasant. That's the idea of a £20,000 capital to go forward to help park groups across the borough. I thought I had some mileage to it. But as, as the debate went on and the vote happened, I realised that what would be the point? Because there would be nothing in it for Freckleton. It would be all grabbed by Kirkham or Westham or somewhere else. Since the 22 years I've been on this council, I think most people that know me would agree I've never been parochial. I've never grabbed for Freckleton. I've never been anti Lim St. Anne's. I've never been anti anywhere. I've never been anti Kirkham, anti Westham, anti Ray Green. I've always considered myself to be a borough councillor and I've tried to act as such. I've tried to act with fairness and I've tried to um, see fairness across the borough. And for some reason, um, the knives are in for Freckleton. There's all sorts of rubbish being talked about. Councillor Mrs Notice is talking about what happened to the money that's come from America, the mystery money. Don't what, respond what to being money? provoked, please. You're here to speak, really, on behalf of your second in the motion. Um, I'd like you to do that constructively. I beg your pardon, Mr Mayor. I felt that a lot of what you were saying was understandably in provocation of what has, you've heard. And I wonder now if you could concentrate on what you were originally going to say when you seconded the motion. Um, <laughs> I don't believe it. It's a pity you didn't interrupt a few times during the evening, Mr Mayor, but thank goodness it's your last meeting. Um, anyway, I, th I do feel an issue is being made of Freckleton, and I think that's very unfortunate. Um, I really congratulate 
the Friends group. I think they've done a fantastic job. They think they've played by the rules. I don't think that uh, they should be penalised because you've got an issue with either Councillor Threlfall, Councillor Fiddler or the Parish Council. Um, Mr Mayor takes offence at me mentioning this mystery money. It didn't take offence at somebody mentioning it before. There's no, there's no facts behind this. This is absolute garbage. Where is this mystery money? Well, it's a mystery. The charitable trust, yes, it exists. And yes, I hope that the group apply to the charitable trust. And if they aren't forthcoming, and, and I'd like it all to be published, and if they aren't forthcoming with a good donation, I think that should be published. And the people of Freckland, I would hope, will want to know why. Because, of course, this is, this is the memorial park. It is about 61 lives that were lost, 38 of them children, which is a horrendous incident for Freckleton. And it will be quite fitting for that charitable trust, I can't think of any more fitting way, to contribute to that. But I'm not here to explain or to defend the parish council, I'm not on it, or to explain or defend the Rostrum Trust. I think, I think my friends um, here on this side have already done just that. Um, as I say, I, I feel quite sad. In fact, this is the saddest meeting I've ever been to. As an independent rural councillor, this is the saddest meeting I've ever been to. I know I'm not going to swear anybody, so I'll not waste your time anymore. Um, and I move that the vote be put, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> I'm just going to say, two hands went up after I called Councillor Mulholland and therefore I don't intend to take any more speakers. Mr Mayor, I'm sorry, you were looking the other way. It was actually my hand was up and I, I spoke I to the amendment, not the substantive. Around, and I don't think there's anything I think anything your deputy was actually making a note of my can name. be added to assist. And I'm sure you're not going to say something which is unique. I'm deciding that the vote will now be put. I'll just give you the procedure. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, the um, motion has been um, proposed that the question be now put and is, is seconded. So that motion that the question be now put needs to be voted on before the substantive um, um, question is actually voted on. So the, the first vote we have to have is that the, the, thought be, the, the question be put. So those in favour of the question be put. Those against? It, it's clearly carried that the question be put, so the vote will be taken on the substantive item. Do you want a recorded vote as before or not? Right. All those in favour of the substantive motion, please show. Those against, please. Then, I, does anyone, do you want to take abstentions? Abstentions, please, just for the record. Thank you very much. That is the last item, and uh, the meeting is now closed.